This is Mark with San Diego Miramar College, and today we'll be talking about the medication administration for both nitroglycerin and aspirin. So this fits into our chest pain scenario for our patient assessment medical. Let's get started here with nitroglycerin. Depending on who you talk to, there's different schools of thought out there. Some people might give aspirin first because it takes longer for that to start acting. Some people might give nitroglycerin first because that one actually acts a lot quicker. Regardless, doesn't really matter. You're gonna give them both for your chest pain patients. Now, when you come up here and you see where it says standard precautions, scene safety, you can think of that as your vital signs. You can think of this next section as your field impression. So for your field impression, you wanna state the signs and symptoms that the patient's experiencing. So substernal chest pain, shortness of breath, pale, diaphoretic, all those things, you wanna play those in to your uh, field impression. And now we're gonna state the pathophysiology. So coronary artery disease leads to atherosclerosis, plaque formation in the coronary arteries that leads to thrombosis and vessel occlusion. So that tissue is actively dying. Now we state the action of nitroglycerin next. So it's a vasodilator and it's going to decrease workload on the heart. Now let's talk about the San Diego County protocol for S126, discomfort pain of suspected cardiac origin, specific to the use of nitroglycerin. So the protocol actually says, if the systolic blood pressure is greater than 100, you may assist the patient to self-medicate own prescribed nitroglycerin sublingual tablets to a maximum of three doses, including the doses the patient has already taken. Now, you wanna be certain that you don't hit any of these contraindications. So you wanna talk about all the contraindications prior to the administration. So if the systolic blood pressure is less than 100, if the pulse is less than 50 or greater than 100, if the patient is on any erectile dysfunction medications, and you do need to know the big three, which are Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, and you do also need to know the pulmonary hypertension medications, which are Rivadio, Flolin, and Valitri. So now let's talk about the five rights. PM Dre, right patient, they are experiencing chest pain of suspected cardiac origin. Right medication, nitroglycerin to decrease that workload on the heart. Dose will be typically 0 0.4 milligrams route will be sublingual don't chew don't swallow just let it dissolve underneath the tongue and then you want to make sure it's not expired we'll triple check that with a partner have them verify and then you'll check the five rights again so the triple check you just verbalize that then you'll correctly assist in the administration of nitroglycerin which means you'll tap one pill into the cap and you'll hand the cap to the patient, instructing them to place this underneath your tongue. Do not chew, do not swallow. How would you assess the patient to determine that the medication is working? So now we're into the reassessment. We've done the intervention, now we're reassessing. So we're gonna reassess them by asking them, how do you feel on a scale of one to 10? So if they were an eight prior to the medication administration, hopefully we can see that go down a little bit. So that's how you would administer nitroglycerin. Now, depending on, like I said, what your instructor says, some of them want you to give nitro first, some of them want you to give aspirin first, doesn't really matter. Let's talk about aspirin now. So these are two separate medications, so you need to do two separate administrations. Now we're gonna talk about the signs and symptoms again, but it's gonna be a little redundant, that's okay. So this patient's experiencing signs of suspected cardiac chest pain, and just real, really briefly, one more time here, pathophysiology is that this atherosclerosis has led to a vessel occlusion. What's the action of aspirin? Well, it's an antiplatelet aggregate. It prevents more clot from forming. Not contrary to common belief, it's not a blood thinner, so don't fall into that trap. It's just an antiplatelet aggregate. It's gonna prevent more clot from forming. Now let's talk about the San Diego County protocols. So for the San Diego County protocols for aspirin, they state that you may assist patient to self-medicate own prescribed aspirin, 81 milligrams to a max of 325 milligrams. Now, it's the patient's prescribed dose. So if they're prescribed two 81 milligram tablets, you're going to give two 81 milligram tablets. If they take a full 325, then you give them the 325. So it's important that you ask the patient what their specific dose is. Now that's regardless of any prior doses that day. So they could have taken aspirin earlier that morning 
And when you arrive on scene, you will give the same dose again, unlike nitroglycerin, where it depends on how many they've taken prior to your arrival. Aspirin does not. Well, let's talk about the five rights. PM Dre, it's a right patient, suspected cardiac origin or chest pain of suspected cardiac origin. Right medication, aspirin will prevent more clot from forming. The dose is the patient's recommended or prescribed daily dose to be given again. And then we have the route, which is orally, chew and swallow. And you also want to make sure that it's not expired. So triple check that, verbalize, and we're going to correctly administer or assist in the administration of aspirin. So you tap the pills out into the cap once more, hand them to the patient, instruct them to chew and swallow. And that brings us into the reassessment yet again. So hopefully that clears it up for you guys on how to administer both nitroglycerin and aspirin for your chest pain patients in your medical assessment. If you guys have any questions, please message me on Canvas or leave a comment down below and I will see you guys soon.